Hi, we're here to talk about the content supply chain. My name is Martin Focasio. I'm the Vice President of Domains here, and we're going to take you through the whole show going from origination to distribution. So, the simplest content supply chain is you originate your content, media, movies, music, sounds. You prepare it, get it all organized, make it pretty. You package it by wrapping it up in all kinds of different data, and then you distribute it out to the people who are going to consume it or other systems during which it is measured and or monetized. These are very simple steps to describe, but they're very complex steps to do. And there's a lot of opportunities inside for AI, machine learning, and other very complex digital platforms. Origination. What we start with origination is with equipment, machines. This is a TV studio. These are all very specialized cameras and other, other machines. Even the lights are specialized and they talk to each other. It doesn't have to be that sophisticated. It can be just a little simple camera setup like we're using here. The point is, is origination starts often in hardware with embedded systems and tools. So you can get to monstrously complicated stuff like this, like in a TV studio, but you'll notice there are screens and they're running software. So hardware and software working together. For example, this is Logic Pro, a digital audio workstation used by professional musicians. They might play the instruments, they might have keyboards, things like that, but this is a combination of hardware and software that work together. So when you're hearing a TV show or a movie, it's very likely that it's gone through Logic Pro. Another one is a total platform for content workflow. Adobe Creative Cloud being a very, very popular and huge platform that includes everything you need to originate content, to make the media, to make pictures, sounds, videos, all of it is inside the Adobe Creative Cloud platform. CMSs, all content management systems, are potentially content workflow platforms, not just origination, but the workflow of creating the content and moving it along. You know, certainly Sitecore, Drupal, WordPress, Adobe Experience Manager, which is a very large system. These are all examples, even SharePoint, of content workflow platforms. Even Microsoft Office could be considered a content workflow platform. You can be making content that's distributable, you know, using PowerPoint or something. We're using PowerPoint for these slides, and this is part of our content origination. So some of the content's made in PowerPoint, some is made on video, and others will be edited later. Um, using Adobe products. So, the origination stage, specialized hardware and embedded software and workflows in devices, moving into generalized content origination software and workflows, tools like the Adobe and CMS clouds. These will all require very high performance local storage, then extremely high bandwidth connectivity, and then cloud services that support these generalized software and workflow tools. So what do you end up with? Some media items and some basic metadata. Here's the media, here's some stuff about it. So what do I have to do next? I have to prepare it. I have to take all the objects I've created, the things I've written, the videos I've recorded, and prepare it. That goes to identifying what's the clip, organizing it, maybe doing some retouching, things like that. There are workflows in the preparation stage. And the cool thing about the preparation stage is that it's increasingly full of big, complicated IT systems. We start with media editing systems, but then you get into digital asset management, which shows up in e-commerce and other places. Content management systems, that shows up all over multiple industries. Learning management systems, those are content systems. They are also all over the place to put it together, and of course, everything goes into the cloud and cloud storage. Now, what's interesting in that is that AI is starting to show up throughout the content workflow. Using AI, even at agencies, creative services agencies, to create and enrich content and get it prepared and used for the next stage, which is to package it. Now you've finished your media thing, you've finished your movie, you've finished your recording. It is not ready to distribute. There's a packaging stage. Packaging means making it ready to get distributed. So if we move on, we can see some really classic examples of custom packaging of media. Star Wars in the United States, Star Wars in China. Sort of the same, but not. You see, that's just literal packaging, the literal posters and things, but you can get deeper than that. You've got you know, different covers, again, for, for uh, different movies. It's actually a slightly different photo, but in the movie itself, for example, in the Pixar film Inside Out, 
The pizza in one country, the United States, they put broccoli on the pizza. In Japan, they put peppers. Kids like, dislike different foods in different countries. Same thing with what's going on in the head of one of the characters in the movie Inside Out. In one place, it's soccer. In another place, it's hockey. It's part of the whole packaging, making it localizable, which includes you know, changing the content in the way it appears, maybe doing subtitles, multiple dubs, and lots and lots of metadata sets. Who's in the movie? When was the movie made? Where is the movie made? What are the stars? What are the scenes? That's metadata, and that's a huge and interesting area. So we find out there's a lot of standards. As this old XKCD cartoon says, as soon as people say there's too many standards, let's make one standard, now there's more standards. It's, it's almost comical. It is comical. In the content industries, we have metadata standards. Uh, right now, the biggest and most rapidly emerging standard is EIDR. Um, and then there's a subset of that that's merging now, ISN-IA, Movie Labs is in there, and there's at least 200 more standards, plus the clients themselves have standards. So you will see a metadata standard at NBC Universal, and you'll see another one at Disney. They all try to standardize, they never do, so it's a metadata mess all the time. But that's part of packaging. How are we going to describe this asset for the next stage, which is, Tagging it, structuring it, putting the rules together, consolidating in a workflow, making a media object ready for distribution. So what's going on in distribution? Let's go to the whiteboard for that one. Now, assuming we have, let's just call it, uh, we'll call it a piece of data, but you know, we have a media uh, package. All right, and we want to move that out into the marketplace. The first stop is the rights model. Rights are the contractual obligations created when the content was originated. Copyright is in there, but distribution rights. What countries, who gets paid, who doesn't get paid, what do you say, what you can't say. Rights are a tangled mess. There are rights management systems, they're just epic in their complexity, but it sets the rules for what happens next. Let's use platforms for an example. Platforms. YouTube is a platform. Netflix is a platform, um, Facebook, you know, NBC, a movie theater, okay, theater, my handwriting is terrible, sorry. The point is that the platform is the place where people can consume the content, find it, discover it, consume it. Those are also related to rights, those are commercial relationships, and the commercial relationships can be there's money changing hands and things like that, but the platforms, you have to package it with the metadata, you have to provide digital copies in a particular format, and then there's play out. Play out is literally, does it play on a phone? Does it have its own app? Does it play in Netflix format? Play out is basically, what are the tools to actually see here, use this content? So play out is mostly a video term, but uh, you know, in other, in other content, you might have like you know, a podcast or something like that. The point is, is that that distribution, those rules of distribution, lead us to the next stage. So you've distributed it, but let's get to the next stage, which is measure. Did the content get played? Did the content get consumed? Who consumed it? What were they listening to? You know, all the measurement. And to measure content, is a wide number of companies out there. For example, these are some of the top measurement companies. You've got Nielsen in there, Comscore, a few others. But it's not just them. In fact, it's a ridiculous number of them. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of companies that are all measuring the utilization of content. And they're all data companies. Every single one of them is a data company. Everybody wants a better algorithm than the next guy to figure out what content is going to be the best content and generate the most revenue. Which leads us nicely to the next topic, monetization. Monetization of content basically comes in three forms. The first, type one, is no monetization. You just give it away. Khan Academy, Wikipedia, they don't monetize. They're not interested in monetization. But moving into type two, you get some, an interesting thing in type two. For example, GoPro and Red Bull. They make a lot of content. They have TV stations on the airplane and stuff, but they're not selling content. They're selling their brand. It's called content marketing. And they make a lot of content to sell Red Bull, to sell GoPros, not to sell the content. So it's kind of a long commercial, but it's, they make it themselves. But when you look at NBC, CBS, all the big networks, um, those guys are actually type two content generators. For content type, content type two generators, they're selling advertising next to the content, 
Okay, that's where they make their money. Moving over to type three, they are selling direct access to the content. They are selling the content itself. What's interesting is the movie studios are sort of in between type two and type three. They want you to go see the movie. They want you to enjoy the movie. Ostensibly, there's no ads in the movie, but there is product placement. There's type two advertising in there. Now, you don't have to be in one category. You can span. Spotify and YouTube span. They have ad supported, or you can opt out by paying directly for the content. You can even go deeper than that. SoundCloud, which is an audio distribution platform, they go all the way from type one, just give away your content. You can put ads against your, your music, or you can just simply have no ads at all and just sell direct access to your content. Nobody has to be in any one category. The industry tends to be heaviest in type two, but the shift has been towards type three, which leads us to more transactional systems, more customer service systems. All right, to recap, you're gonna originate your content with a lot of machinery and special software. You're gonna prepare your content with sophisticated workflows, including AI. You're gonna package your content based on all kinds of complex rule sets and a lot of metadata and a lot of localization. You're gonna measure it in terms of hundreds of different potential measurement choices. You're gonna distribute it with lots of different platforms that you're gonna to have to form technical and legal relationships. And you're gonna monetize it by a range of options in types one, two, and three. Okay, thank you, that was it, and uh, hope to see you in the next video.